Sewing should be a skill set that every woodsman possesses. And the reason for that is really twofold. Number one, we should be able to repair our gear in the field. We shouldn't have to go out, have something fail, and leave our camp or struggle through the rest of our camping trip in order to get something fixed. We should be able to repair it in a field, and we don't need much for that. All we really need is our needle and some thread to fix anything from leather, canvas, to cloth. So if we understand a few basic concepts, which we're gonna to talk today about stitches, you're gonna be able to fix that stuff. Secondly is, as woodsmen, sometimes we come across a piece of gear that maybe we think needs to be tweaked, or we come up with a new idea that we just can't find that specific style of gear. So the good thing with understanding how to stitch and sew is that you can make the gear yourself. You buy your supplies and you can make your own piece of gear, which is absolutely an awesome thing to do for sure. So let's get the camera zoomed in. We're gonna talk about three different types of stitches to keep you more successful in the woods. So the first stitch I'd like to show everybody is a whip stitch. And I already started one right here. All right, and this stitch is a very simple stitch. All that you're basically doing for this is you're gonna take your needle, of course threaded, put it in a material and out the back side, pull it through, and whip it around to the next spot. So you can see here, just going in the front, try to do it this way, go in the front, come out the back, Back in the front, and out the back. Just whipping that along the edge of your material that you're trying to sew. So the whip stitch is very, very simple. It holds up really well. The only downfall with this, it's not the tightest stitch. Okay, you can get some flexibility between your two pieces of material, and you're also exposing a lot of thread, and you're using a lot of thread when you do this. So if you have very limited supply, you might want to rethink that but this stitch works out really, really well for many applications. So the next stitch that I wanna talk about is a running stitch. Now a running stitch, unlike the whip stitch, runs this way compared to whipping around. So all that we do for this stitch is take our needle, we go in the front side and all the way out the back side. Then we go from the back side through to the front side and we continue that running pattern right down. Another quick way to do this is to stick your needle in the front. You don't even need to look at the back, just bend your material around, stick your needle out, and pull it through. And that will give you that running stitch that we're looking for. This keeps your material a little bit tighter than a whip stitch and also, in my opinion, protects your stitching a little bit more. You can see if we're working on edges of material, we have a lot that can get snagged and caught here. This on the other hand, we're letting the material take the brunt of the force and our stitching is just holding that material together. And the last stitch that I wanted to talk to everybody about is a continuation of the running stitch. Now there's two different ways to do this. I'm gonna show you the easiest way to actually explain this. So we know our running stitch, so we go in one side, out the other, back and forth, back and forth. When we get done sewing where we wanna to go, to finish a saddle stitch, we actually come back. So where the material, so where the thread, I'm sorry, it comes out here, here's my needle, okay? Where we went in the material there, we're actually gonna go back in the material here and come out the back side. Pull that through and then we're gonna continue on. So where this material, right here, where this thread right here goes into the material, we're gonna go in there and out the back side. And we're gonna continue along, just filling in those gaps as we go that we have not sewn yet. Now, by far, this is gonna be the strongest stitch that you can use. This stitch is very, very good for leather work, okay? Just for the fact that our leather is very strong, so we want to put a super strong stitch because majority of the time with leather work, our seams where we connect the two pieces of leather together are going to be the weakest point. You're going to normally tear this out before you tear leather. So we want to use some type of saddle stitch. So that's a saddle stitch. You can see how we're closing it in. It looks like one continuous line. We went one direction and came back. So that's the easiest way to show that stitch. So they're your basic stitches. We have a whip stitch, a running stitch, and a saddle stitch. 
And with those three stitches, there's really nothing that you can't fix in the field. Or if you're actually making supplies for yourself, there's nothing that you're gonna run across that those stitches won't cover. So it's important to understand and know them. But on a side note, don't wait with this until you get in a field and have a gear failure to try to figure this stuff out. My suggestion is find a piece of gear that you like, try to copy it or replicate it, draw yourself up a pattern and work with this a little bit. At first, it's gonna seem unnatural, but over time, you're gonna get better with it and you're gonna understand when you yourself wanna use specific stitches over the other and it'll all come together. And then when you're in the field, you don't have to worry about it. You know you're gonna be able to repair your gear. So this was Dan Wolwak with Coal Cracker Bushcraft. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't already, check us out at coalcrackerbushcraft.com for all our classes and online store, which is ever growing every single day. And until the next video, stay in the woods, guys.